Hi everyone, we are looking at innovation of the gastrointestinal tract. What do we mean by innovation? We are looking at nerve supply to the GIT. The purpose of this nerve supply to the GIT is to control the functions of the GIT. That's why there is no nerve supply. So every organ of the body is innervated, be it the muscles, the heart, the diaphragm, Every organ is innervated. Okay. So we just want to appreciate the innovation of the gastrointestinal tract, especially physiological aspects. Okay. So the nervous system and the endocrine system regulate functions of the GIT. So the major functions of the gastrointestinal tract is motility, movement of substances four functions and then there's also absorption that is extracting those micronutrients into into blood that's absorption okay and then there's digestion the breaking down of the food that we eat the complex carbohydrates the, lip, the lipids and the proteins into amino acids and dipeptides etc and then there's secretion the GIT also secretes mucus, it secretes saliva, gastric acids. Uh, these also play a very important role in digestion and absorption and defense mechanisms. Okay, so these are the four major functions of the GIT. Motility, absorption, digestion, and secretion. Now, in terms of innovation, we need to know that there are two types of nerve supply. There is uh, intrinsic and the extrinsic. So what's the definition of intrinsic? Intrinsic nerves to the GI tract, they form what we call the enteric nervous system that control all the secretions and movements of the GI tract. Those are called intrinsic nerve supply. We also have extrinsic nerve supply. These are these come from the central nervous system. That is, they control the enteric nervous system. Okay. So these are within. These are external. These are internal. So within the walls of the GIT, there is a network of nerves. Remember, the, the GIT has about, it, it has four layers. There is a mucosal layer. There is a submucosal layer. There is a muscular layer and the serosa. So within these layers, in the in the submucosal layer, there is a layer, there is a network of nerves, which we call which we call the submucosal plexus. And then in the muscular layer, there is also a network of nerves, which we call the myenteric plexus. Okay. So those network of nerves, they make up what we call the enteric nervous system. They can function independently of the extrinsic innervation. Okay? They can function independent of in extrinsic innervation. For them to function independently, meaning they have pacemaker cells, just like the heart does a pacemaker cell, the sinoatrial node, even the GIT has pacemaker cells. These pacemaker cells, they are called kajao. Okay, interstitial cells of Kajao. So these are the pacemaker cells. They are able to um, initiate electrical impulses. Okay, causing secretions within the GIT. They can also cause movements within the GIT. Okay, these are interstitial cells of Kajao. So extrinsic nerve supply, they come from central nervous system. So this diagram is just showing the, the extrinsic nerve supply and also the enteric nervous system. So this is the enteric nervous system, which is made up of the myenteric plexus, which is also called the Aubash plexus. And then we have the submucosal plexus, which is called the Meissner's plexus. So they interact. Okay. 
Now, if you look at the function of the submucosal plexus, they're involved in uh, endocrine cells. Okay, well, okay, we'll come back to this. But what I'm trying to say is that in terms of function, you should remember that the myenteric, meaning M, motility, they're involved in anything to do with movements in the GIT. Okay? And the sub mucosal plexus with S, they are involved in secretions within the GIT. Now we have innervation from external sources. We have the parasympathetic division and the sympathetic division. Okay, the sympathetic division, these ones are associated with the spinal nerves. And then the parasympathetic division, they are associated with the cranial nerves. Okay, so when you are talking of parasympathetic innervation of the GIT, we are talking of the vagus nerve and the, the pelvic nerve. Let me show you another important diagram. This ex which showing the extrinsic innervation of the GIT. Extrinsic innervation of the GIT. We'll start with describing the parasympathetic nerve. This one is supplied by the vagus nerve, which is cranial nerve number 10, and also supplied by the pelvic nerve. Okay. So the, the, the vagus nerve innervates upper part of the GIT. It innervates the striated muscles of the upper third of the esophagus. Okay. It also innervates the walls of the stomach. It innervates the small intestines and the ascending colon. Not the descending, the ascending colon. It's innervated by the vagus nerve. But the pelvic nerve, it innervates the lower part of the GIT. Okay. It innervates the lower part of the GIT. That is the striated mass of the external uh, anal sphincter. It innervates the walls of the transverse descending and sigmoid colon. Okay. That is about the parasympathetic. In terms of ganglia, okay, the ganglia of the, the ganglia, remember, it's just a cluster of nerves, eh? Or cell bodies. In terms of ganglia, the ganglia of the parasympathetic, first, 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 of, first and foremost, the, the sympathetic, we can see the ganglia here. Okay. But in the, in the parasympathetic, you don't see any ganglion. Okay. So the ganglia of the parasympathetic is near the target uh, organs. Near these target organs. In the GIT. So these ganglia are located in the walls of the GIT within the myenteric and the submucosal plexus. Okay. So meaning that the postgaglionic neurons, they release neurotransmitters such as acetylcholine. They also release neurotransmitters such as uh, substance P and uh, vasointestinal, vasoactive intestinal peptide. Okay, so the ganglia, we're not able to see it is just located in the target organ itself. The vagus nerve is a mixed nerve and then we can say 75% of the fibers innervating the GIT is via the vagus nerve. Okay. And then when we look at the parasympath, uh, 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 the, the sympathetic nerves, the sympathetic nerves has four ganglia. Okay, it has the celiac, it has the superior mesenteric, it also has the inferior mesenteric, and there's another one which I've not shown, the, it's called the hypogastric, hypogastric ganglia. Okay, so bef from the spinal cord to the ganglia, it's called the pre, pre-ganglionic sympathetic nerve. 
after the ganglion or after the ganglia to the target tissue it's called the post ganglionic sympathetic nerve so the post ganglionic fibers are adrenergic they they secrete adrenaline or we can say no adrenaline or no epinephrine okay so the post ganglionic fibers are adrenergic fibers so here we said uh, the parasympathetic if you look at where they are originating from, they are originating from the uh, from T5 to L1. Okay, that's where they are originating from. But the parasympathetic, they are originating from the sacral region and also from the brainstem. Okay. So that's the in extrinsic innovation of the GIT. So what, uh, what is this diagram showing? This diagram is showing uh, parasympathetic innovation. The ganglia, we say they are located in the target tissue. The sympathetic, the ganglia are located not in the target tissue. So they release a neurotransmitter called no epinephrine. Here they release neurotransmitters such as acetylcholine and uh, peptides, such as VIP. Okay, so you can appreciate from this diagram how they communicate with these uh, intrinsic uh, plexuses, the myenteric plexus, the submucosal plexus. So they interact with these uh, plexus, forming what we call synapses. Now what's the function of the sympathetic nerve fibers? Sympathetic nerve fibers, they inhibit okay, the movement and decrease the secretion of the GIT by secreting neurotransmitter and adrenaline. They also cause a, a constriction of sphincters. That's their function. So if you remember, the four function of the digestive system is digestion, absorption, motility, and secretion. So the function of the sympathetic is to decrease all these four functions. Okay. How do they do that? By releasing a neurotransmitter called adrenaline. They also constrict the sphincters. Which sphincters are these? We have the pyloric sphincters. We have the lower esophageal sphincters. We have the internal anal sphincters. Okay. For example, when you're doing exercise, the sympathetic innervation is, the sympathetic system is activated when you're doing exercise. On the heart, it will increase heart rate, contractility, and stroke volume. But on the digestive system, it will decrease these functions, the digestion, absorption, and motility. Now, what's the function of the parasympathetic? The function of the para, uh, parasympathetic is just the opposite. Okay. They increase di digestion, they increase absorption, they increase motility, they increase secretion. They also relaxes, not constrict, but they relax the sphincters okay and then we have the enteric nervous system we say it is made up of my enteric plexus and the submucosal plexus that's what we said the features the features of this enteric plexus it's part of the autonomic nervous system okay that's why it is also called the little brain because most of the neurotransmitters secreted by the enteric nervous system can also be secreted by the brain. It has many of the neurotransmitters like amines, noepinephrine, serotonin, GABA, nitric oxide, carbon monoxide. Okay, it has about 100 million neurons. Okay, so the digestive system is known as the little brain.
Okay, so these are what we are talking about, the myenteric plexus and the submucosal plexus. So where can you find the, uh, the, the submucosal plexus in the submucosal layer? Where can you find the myenteric plexus in between the, long in between the longitudinal muscles and the circular muscles? Or we can just say they are found within the muscular layer. Because remember the myenteric plexus is to cause what? Contraction. The submucosal plexus, they are found nearer to the epithelial cells here. Okay, we have uh, parietal cells that secretes hydrochloric acid. We have the G cells that secretes gastrin. We have uh, enterochromaffin cells. So this they need to be innervated by the submucosal plexus for the secretions to occur. Okay, so this is uh, innervation of the GIT. Remember that the GIT is innervated by external and internal. Then, we, then within the internal, we have the myenteric, which functions to cause motility. And then we have the submucosa plexus, which functions to, to trigger secretory cells to secrete their products. And then the external innervation, we have the parasympathetic, which increases digestion, absorption, motility, and secretion. At the same time, it relaxes the sphincters. We also have the sympathetic, which decreases digestion, absorption, motility, and secretion, which also constrict the sphincters. So this is a normal function of these innovations. Okay. So we'll end here for now. Thank you very much.